Small Cap Epicenter of Glorcom TV, a daily fast-paced, edgy show, bringing the best press release out of the small cap space every morning at the open, so you can probably profit from them and maybe find your next great small cap investment. As you can see, it's Friday, the January, 20, Friday, January 28th. I'm back from Vancouver, but behind me, no waterfront. I kind of missed that a little bit, but glad to be back. I got to tell you, the Vancouver Cambridge Conference, unbelievable, bodes very well uh, for the upcoming year of the junior resources market. Over 400 companies, thousands of investors. It was nonstop from beginning to end, so I think that's great news for, uh, for resource investors. Today, four press releases for you. Two from today, two that came out yesterday that you should know about because we didn't do a show. And it's, you're talking about China, uh, automotive, uh, and we're all over the place. We've got a great variety of press releases. Let's get straight to it. I'm going to start off with China. First up, China back battery trades on the NASDAQ under CBAK. Uh, this is a manufacturer of lithium based uh, battery cells. They put out their first quarter numbers and December 31st, 2010. Here are the highlights revenue increased 26.5% year over year and 14.3% quarter on quarter. That's sequential. Got to love that. Uh, revenues from high power batteries more than tripled sequentially in Q1 2011. That's big. Gross margin. I really like this. This is their gross profit improved to 15.7%. That compares to two, that, that compares to 9.5%. Uh, it's a great jump. You're talking about uh, more than 50% uh, increase in their gross margin. That's fantastic. Another collaborative positive cash flow, $18.4 million. However, they did say this uh, reflects continued progress in the company's turnaround plan. So that's something you've got to look into. This may be an opportunity as you're jumping into the uh, execution of that turnaround plan. You'll see from the stock price below. But nonetheless, uh, something for you to be aware of. And in November 2010, uh, Cherry Automotive uh, officially launched its first lithium-ion solution electric vehicle. It's powered by China back to lithium ion and batteries, and that was at the 25th uh, World, Electri World Electric Vehicle uh, Conference. So it means they're expanding their, uh, their battery cells primarily are the principal component of rechargeable batteries commonly used in, in consumer electronics, PDA, cellular phones, notebook computers, uh, digital media, things like that. Uh, but their production facilities were recently expanded to support the production of larger batteries for various types of vehicles. I think that's really important to keep an eye on, especially given the fact that Cherry Automotive uh, officially launched their first lithium-ion solution using China back battery. Company closed yesterday, $1.89, 52-week low high, 268, 52-week low, 233. Dead smack in the middle of their trading range. So it might this is a great time to do some due diligence there and see where they meet, where they may be at. Staying with, uh, 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 so we're going on to solar, sorry, Sun Valley Solar. Uh, trades on the OTC under SSOL. They were awarded a new solar installation contract in Imperial, California. It's on a commercial solar installation contract with Crop Production Services. It's a 45 uh, and change kilowatt solar power system comprised of about 480 80 solar panels, amongst other things. Uh, contract value, just over $200,000, supported by $100,000 of solar incentive rebates from the local utility and 63000 from the Federal Treasury Department. So I like that. It makes the sale a lot easier, and it shows that the government is behind these programs, making Sun Valley's business uh, that much easier. Expected to generate just over 77,000 kilowatt hours of electricity annually, and during the peak months of May to October, the system is actually going to generate surplus power and earn credits uh, with the Imperial Irrigation District utility. That's going to earn them, uh, that's going to allow them to offset the less sunny uh, winter months. Close yesterday. Now, here's something you got to be aware of. Close yesterday. Uh, looks like 1.9. Call it two cents, okay? Uh, the 52-week high and low is all over the place, from a fraction of a penny up to 51 cents. So that's the uh, red flag where you got to go take a closer look at this. But it seems like a real contract, but on its face, not enough. You've got to do some more due diligence. Let's switch over to the traditional resources side. Both of the following press releases came out yesterday, but you should know about them. First up, Avalon Rare Metals, one of our clients back in the early days. We're very proud of these guys. Now, big, big board TSX, AVL, and uh, in the U.S. on the stock of AVL as well. They've reported an increase in the indicated resources at their Nechalacho uh, Rare Earth Element Deposit. That's in Northwest Territories. All the data from the 2010 Summer Definition Drilling Program has been compiled into the deposit black, block model. And the 43101 compliant resource estimates have been updated accordingly. And, in fact, not updated accordingly, updated big. And, in fact, they say it as expected. This resulted in a significant increase in the indicated mineral resources to 57.5 million tons 
grading 1.56 percent trio with 20.72 percent uh, heavy rare earth and uh, and, uh, and uh, true rare earth uh, compares with 20.45 million tons uh, previous to that. So you talk about they almost tripled the tonnage uh, on this, and uh, the grades are roughly the same. I mean, uh, there, there are definitely some differences there. Uh, higher on the trio, a little lower on the heavy rare earth slash trio number, but we talk about tripling the tonnage. That's big. Uh, I was on a plane yesterday, so I want to find out what's happened with stock. They do say, though, they caution, the increase in the indicated mineral resources will not necessarily influence the decision on production rate, which will ultimately be determined by sales volumes estimates rather than resource size. This is, this is different from most resources, gold, silver, if you, if you increase the tonnage, uh, then, you can, then you can increase the production accordingly to so much demand around the world. But uh, right now, Avalon can't say for sure that this excess tonnage could be, uh, could be put into the production decision. My guess, this is going to pay off huge dividends going forward. We know where rare earths are going. It's just a matter of when. And so they're going to be able to utilize that. They're going to be able to capitalize on that. If you don't know about the company, primary asset is a 100% owned advanced development stage project. The Nechalacha Rare Earth Element Deposit, like I said, Northwest Territories. Avalon believes the deposit is one of the highest quality, undeveloped rare earth element deposits in the world, unique in that it, it's got exceptional enrichment in the heavy rare earths. Those are the expensive ones. Those are the hard ones to find. That's what everyone needs around the world. They closed yesterday 574. This is this 52 week trading range, $1.90 on the low, 814 on the high. That was all recent when they went over to New York, when they, when they got uh, accepted for trading on the American exchanges there. The stock just shot up significantly. Uh, in fact, unfortunately, I posted on Twitter, as much as I love Avalon, uh, the prices got too frothy and I'm waiting for a pullback. So we did get it, and we're looking good, and I'm curious as to what this is going to do for the share price uh, over the next couple of days. Big numbers here. Finally, Star Navigation Systems, also a previous client of Agoracom, uh, trades on the venture under SNA. They've announced that they signed an agreement with Esterline CMC Electronics. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute why this is important to the resources space. It's a memorandum of agreements, an MOA. The two companies plan to cooperate in the establishment of an integrated turnkey solution for original equipment manufacturers, OEMs. It's going to combine STARS in-flight safety monitoring system uh, with CMC's pilot view EFB system. CMC is going to again promote the resulting solution to OEMs and select customers within the air transport and business jet markets as part of its cockpit systems offerings. Now, sounds like a lot of big talk, right? Uh, you know, just a memorandum of agreement, big deal you think it will. Let me tell you something. CMC is a wholly owned subsidiary of Esterline Corporation, a specialized aerospace, aerospace and defense company headquartered in Bellevue, Washington. It employs 9,000 people around the world. This is not a small agreement. This is significant. They are going to have to first uh, cooperate in establishing the turnkey solution and then get out and market it. But this is a, this is a significant uh, memorandum of agreement in my mind and further goes to show and demonstrate why StarNav solution, uh, uh, solutions are very effective in the marketplace. A little bit about the company. They've got the exclusive worldwide license to a proprietary patented in-flight safety monitoring system. Basically, I call it the black box, uh, real, a real-time black box that sits inside of airplanes. It's the first system, according to the company, worldwide to feature in-flight data analysis, monitoring, and diagnostics with a real-time connection between aircraft and the ground. That real-time capability uh, of tracking performance trends uh, and predicting incident occurrences, enhanced aviation safety, and improved fleet management will lead to lower fuel costs, uh, which is, uh, I, I think, why they deserve to be here on Globe Investor. You talk about they reduce fuel costs around the world, they reduce energy, and uh, it's a company definitely worth knowing. Closed yesterday, 26 cents, 52-week range, 12 on the low, 57 on the high. So you've got some shareholders that are pretty happy here, but still got some room to move. And as long as they've got press releases like this, uh, hopefully they're going to move higher. I do have options in the company. I want to disclose that, specifically Agoracom. So do your due diligence. Assume I'm hugely conflicted and that you should take a closer look on your own. That's a wrap. Amazing news. All four press releases today. Great news. I'm happy with that, especially because it's a Friday. If you look for more great small cap resource and energy uh, news and you're watching this on Globe Investor, look below me or to the left of me, depending on which page you're on, to take a look at the companies we've covered over the past few days. Also, get to the front page of Agoracom if you're not there already. Watch the show on a daily basis. If you can't, we've got our syndication partners at YouTube, iTunes. You pick the one you like best. We've got the best press releases of the past few days, and we've got the marketplace for you to discover your next great company. That's a wrap. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing weekend. See you tomorrow.